What's up guys, welcome back to the Educated Barfly. Today we're gonna to be making a cocktail called the Millionaire. This one has got a very ambiguous history. I don't quite know exactly where it came from. And as you'll see, a lot of things get crossed. So the one that we're doing today is a reconstruction by a bartender named Ted Hay, also known as Dr. Cocktail. Uh, we're doing the reconstructed version because the original version that he took this from, which was from a book called How and When by Gerald F. Marco and Hyman Gale, which was published in 1937, was just a bit too sweet. And, and also, when tracing the lineage of this cocktail, you find a lot of millionaire cocktails um, numbered different numbers. And, you know, so the one that we're going to do today is based on the recipe from the 1937 edition of, of uh, How and When, but there is a number four... There is a Millionaire number 4, which was published in the Savoy Cocktail book by Harry Craddock in 1930. So it's kind of, it's like, the thing is, is that back in the day, somebody would create a cocktail and then people would create subsequent versions and then they would number it like the Corpse Reviver number 1 and number 2 to differentiate uh, one from the other. Although the Corpse Reviver number 1 is a completely different drink than the... Corpse Reviver number two, but you couldn't have two drinks just called the Corpse Reviver. So they just say number one and number two to differentiate it. And I'm sure that there are some other versions that I'm not aware of of this cocktail. That said, the reconstructed version is a lot better than the original version. Um, if you just take a look at what those uh, what those ingredients are, you can just see that they're very saccharine kind of sweet. And so what uh, Ted Hay did was just to sort of kind of dial in the ingredients and then also like sub some stuff out and just make like a good, very well balanced drink. So let's get into it. First thing we're gonna do is one ounce of lime juice. And then we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of slow gin. three quarters of an ounce of apricot brandy or apricot liqueur. And then an ounce and a half of Myers rum. You can use other Jamaican dark rum, but this is what Mr. Hay used. I wanted to taste the cocktail that he sort of reconstructed for this. Add our ice to our tin, lock our tin, give it a nice hard shake. All right, give it a nice shake vigorously with ice is what most vintage cocktail books tell you to do when creating or when shaking cocktails and creating cocktails, but the shaking is part of the creating, I guess. And then we're just going to Ooh, good call. Look at that, dude. So I was going to use a 5.5 ounce coupe, and then I took a look at the specs, and I was like, uh, this is a 4 ounce cocktail. Add dilution to that. You're looking at a, we're going to need a 6 ounce glass, and voila, instead of the 5.5 ounce glass that would have kind of spilled over, this is a perfect wash line. Just saying. All right, let's take a sip. Ooh, nice and tart. So the great thing about this cocktail is that you don't have like any simple syrup. You're balancing out the lime juice with apricot brandy. Apricot brandy on its face, isn't, it, it's gonna be a little sweet, but it's not gonna be that sweet. That said, you get this like really tart lime right on the front that devolves into the sort of kind of dark sugar notes of the rum. You got that apricot right on the finish. The slow gin gives it like a little character as well and some nice color. I'm into that. I want to drink this whole thing, truth be told. I literally just want to go and just down this whole thing, but we got to shoot a thumbnail. So maybe after the thumbnail, I don't know. I think people liked it the other day when I drank the whole cocktail. There were a couple people that came up to me and they were like, oh, that Fair Fairbanks song. The Fairbanks uh, loan number two that you did? Oh man, you, I, dude, the end screen said it all. The empty glass was just like, I saw that empty glass in the end screen and I had to make that cocktail and drink it. So I guess it works. Um, I mean, I'm pretty honest about how these things taste. 
I'm not going to tell you that. Uh, I mean, I, I will say, truth be told, I test just about every single cocktail. So I know how it's going to taste. I also want to get my thoughts together on the flavor profile so that I really describe it. Because, you know, honestly, flavor is something that's subjective. I can say it tastes like tomatoes to me, and it might not take like, taste like tomatoes to you. But, I mean, that would be kind of a weird thing to say about this particular cocktail. But it's, you know, the, the point is that it's highly subject, uh, subjective. So I really like to try and dial it in as specifically as possible so you guys get a really good idea of how this cocktail is gonna taste when you taste it. So I will say that this is gonna be a very tart cocktail, but you have a little bit of sweetness kind of playing up from the other ingredients, you know? And the thing is, is that like, when you say like, oh, dark rum is gonna be sweet, that's actually not true. It's a misconception about rum. Rum necess isn't necessarily sweet, and a lot of the lighter rums are a little drier now. Maybe the dark rums are a little bit sweeter, but I wouldn't call them sweet as in like, what you would think of as like sweet. I would say simple syrup is sweet as you would think of as sweet. So um, the other thing that I did a little differently is that I, I uh, dehydrated some lime wheels. So really easy to do. Cut some, li cut some lime wheels and some like any citrus you want, lime, lemon, orange, whatever, and then just put it in your oven at 200 degrees for about three hours and you have these nice kind of dehydrated, um, uh, wheels, I guess. And, you know, the thing is, is that I just, it's nice to sort of try and vary the garnish, you know? So, you know, I don't want every cocktail to seem the same. I want all of our thumbnails to look beautiful and enticing. So I thought maybe like a nice wheel, like a lot of the times when we do a wheel, we'd like put it like this, or we'd have it like this, like that or something, which is nice, but we've done it before. So I thought maybe I would clip this. I don't know. It's a little bit thick to clip it, but I would like try and like clip this maybe to the side of the cocktail, like so. Clips are very tr on trend in the cocktail world at the moment. Um, it is like a garnish that is beautiful, but not necessarily super functional. Although I gotta say that it, they do have a nice kind of scent to it. Like the, at, in the drying process, maybe the, the juice kind of comes out and sort of coats it. And it, it does have a nice kind of scent to it. Yeah, I will say. You are about to say something. You're looking quizzical and confused, Marius. Can I help you? Why is it so uh, dark? It, it looks like, like a blood lime, if that was a thing. Well, I just think like when the lime dries out, it, gets, it just gets darker in color. Maybe the, the juice oxidizes it as it dries. Dry, I mean, I did some oranges. Oranges turn kind of dark on the inside as well. But, but, color, no? but here's the thing. I can't tell you. Maybe we can ask Dave Arnold about the science behind why a lime turns brown when you dry it. I just dried it. I did, all I did is sliced it up, mm -hmm. put it on a on a like a wire rack inside the oven. I put it to 200 degrees, and I just let it do that for three hours. I just sat there for three hours, and I kind of monitored it to see as it, to see it as it went. I bet you, if you did less time, it would be less brown. But I mean, I like it. I think it's a nice. It's like a really nice sort of garnish that you don't see a ton, you know? But I kind of feel like we've done everything garnish-wise. I think you know what we need to do. This is what I think we need to do, all right? I, I said it here first, guys. I think we need to do a video with the garnish guy on Instagram, Josue uh, Romero. We need to do, we need to do a, a, a thing with him. We need to do a Sporting Life episode where we do like upping your garnish game with the garnish guy. I think that that would be a good video. People would really get into it. Hey guys, if you want that video, comment below. See how many people you guys actually want to this guy, you check him out on Instagram at, at the Garnish Guy. He does incredible garnishes, and his his cocktail photography game is on fleek. Did I use that right? On fleek. Mm -hmm. You don't see? You're just as hip as I am. It's well, I can say it's on point, right? Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to use like more. I don't know, young slang, so that uh, you know people don't notice the gray hairs and stuff. All right, guys. Well, I guess that's it. Here you are, the millionaire cocktail. I think you guys could listen to us bullshit all day and all night, but we are not going to put you through that. If you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe. And if you want to check us out on Patreon, we've got some very awesome, less rambly stuff going on there. Totally exclusive to Patreon. Patreon.com slash barfly. Press like. Hit subscribe. To, that really helps us out. And then hit the bell icon so you get uh, notified. I want to see those notification, uh, I wanna see everyone who subscribed hit that notification, that bell icon. I wanna see that, that metric go up, guys, all right? It's on you guys. If you get irritated about the bell and being notified, then, you know, 
Okay, I understand. But do it if you're if you don't feel if you don't feel any one way about it, do it. And if you want to do it, definitely do it. I will see you guys next time.